Greetings from afar. I hope you're doing great. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. Welcome to today's program. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I am pleased to be the moderator of this session. I'm joining you from the city of San Jose in Costa Rica. Today, we have the pleasure of having one of the most prominent coaches in badminton worldwide. I'm talking about coach Philippe Limousin from France, who will talk about a very interesting topic for us coaches. Well, this in this talk, we'll learn a little bit about the roadmap that France set to develop badminton. This talk is entitled Badminton Development Foundations in France. But before we start, I'd like to summarize a little bit about Coach Philippe's career. Currently, Philippe is the manager of the French Badminton Federation and he has been working as such since 2013. He's a national coach at INSEP, which is a French High Performance Center. He's also the High Performance Assistant Manager. He has been club coach and officer and he was a PE teacher working in sensitive areas with difficult audiences. Without further ado, Let me introduce you to Coach Philippe. Good afternoon, Philippe. Welcome to our program. Thank you for sharing with our audience and welcoming us tonight to your home in Paris, France. Welcome. Thank you, Adrienne. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be here to share Badminton Fraternity. Um, happy after hearing you, your words in your beautiful language, the language of Carolina Marin, the language of badminton lovers as well. I'm going to present in French, so thank you. Welcome, dear friends. Welcome to Paris. Thank you, everyone, for the honor that you've given me the option to talk about French badminton. Thank you for the introduction. This presentation was done in China and Indonesia and the Basque country and in England. And I'm really happy to be here sharing this with you. I'm going to share with you about French badminton in just a few slides. So in this presentation, I'm going to try to show you what we did in France in terms of badminton. Ten days ago, Christophe Jean-Jean, one of uh, my colleagues, in, talked about high performance. And today I'm going to show you what we did together with the whole team that's behind me in order to work on French badminton. So today I'm going to start just as Christophe did by giving you a few numbers in regards to our work, our reality. So I'm going to show you this slide of our federation. Nowadays, well, since last week, uh, in France, we have 200,000 members in badminton. And we work thanks to the work of uh, volunteers. W these volunteers allow allow us to do a lot of actions. And these volunteers also allow us to make great efforts and work. Well, this is our federation. As I said, we have more than 70,000 volunteers for the Badminton Federation. Here, I want to show you some figures. These are important numbers from the life of our federation. This federation was founded in 1934. Then in 1942, it had to stop operations because of uh, 
Nazi Germany, they didn't want us to keep working. The Nazi movement actually stopped this British sport, as they called it. So we had to wait until 1979 so we could be reborn as a federation. And we had to wait even more until 1997 to win our first European medal. And we had to even wait some more until 2017 to win our first gold medal in Europe. Christoph has told you about this a little bit already, but these are just some numbers to remind you of the trajectory that we've had as a federation. Our budget is 8 million euros, which were destined to high performance and 2.5 million dollar million euros which is destined to badminton for all to teach everyone this sport this is destined to the different regions and places where people want to play these sports so our federation is a democracy and it works uh, thanks to a council and a chairman and it works together with a manager, which is myself. I'm the national manager, the DTN. I work together with a team of 27 uh, collaborators. You already know Christophe. Some of you know Olivier Benoit, who's also really appreciated. Badminton in France is practiced in approximately 101 departments and 18 regions. We have 2,000 clubs and one thousand and more associations, and we have associations that only focus on badminton. These are 1,200 youth schools. Nowadays, in France, we have four medals, at global level for para badminton in the and these were won in the Paralympics. It's an important number and we are the first sport that is taught in the physical education class in schools. So what's how does our association work? I'm going to give you some information about the soul of our federation and the team behind our federation. The soul of our federation is the volunteers, as I said before. These are the ones that make this engine work. They work without pay. They give their time willingly in order to reach our target, which is to participate in the dream of high performance of many youngsters and also share the joy that people experience while playing badminton. These are the two pillars that we have. One is the government or the state, which I think is quite important. And the other one is the, the association, the French Badminton Association. So badminton works based on the country the country's principle which is freedom, equality and fraternity. And this is applied to every French sport and I'm not only a public servant working in this government but together with all the members of the federation, we receive a salary and we work thanks to a democratic system based on the law of 1901, which gives every member of the association the opportunity to be the chairman of this association. At a regional level, this works exact same way. Everything is Everything depends on this democracy and the system is the same for everyone. Anyone can 
practice badminton. Anyone can be a delegate as well to define the chairman of the federation with whom I work. So we have a very strong government together with a federation that includes more than 200,000 people. Now, the state, in order to help the federation, gives 2 million euros to the federation plus the salary that is given to 17 technicians, including my salary. But there are also local um, local um, financing that is testing to the programs of specific regions. And we have Badminton for All, the Badminton for All program. And this works for every club thanks to local uh, funding from the same community there or municipality. And this uh, funding also comes from the events that each club carries out. And evidently, there's also financing from each one of the members. This can be up to 50% of the financing. So this is the way in which the financing works. This financing comes from the government in part and also from the members themselves. Therefore, France is really happy to give the means to all French to have this. And I think that this is something very particular from our nation. All of this is inspired by the French slogan, freedom, equality and fraternity. So sport gives us freedom. Sport is for everyone. So there's equality. And what better sport than badminton to understand fraternity? What are, what are our missions? The missions that I am in charge of and also my team. Of course, we need to support badminton in all its activities. We need to position the sport in a very strong way in schools. I'm going to talk about this later on. Also, we need to participate in health, in the health of French. And this is also an ecological transition of sport. We also need to guarantee a secure framework of to practice badminton. Regardless if you are a man, a woman, a child, everyone should be able to practice the sport if they want to. And the French government protects the federation. And all of this is part of a whole. And this is the vision that I want to share to everyone abroad. This is the vision of French badminton. We support anyone who wants to practice badminton. And I think that this is something that is important to remind everyone. The badminton is for everyone. And it's mainly financed by the government. The Federation has changed quite a bit. Here you can see some Olympic and Paralympic logos because the Badminton, the French Badminton Federation has had an Olympic and a Paralympic target for a while now in order to have one single French team. In order to have these, the Federation has organized itself. We have um, a chairman. The government has assigned me to be next to this chairman and there are three sectors we have uh, the sports sector you've already met Christophe who has told you what goes on uh, in here we have also the durable territor territories which is for badminton for all which includes badminton for all also, we have an administrative and finance uh, sector, also a communication sector, 
and、uh, international relations sector. Li Bibin is in charge of these. He's usually very present in the French speaking countries in Latin America, and I think that this is very important. And finally, we have a specific. Area that is quite important for us and for the future of French badminton, which is the training sector. In order to make professionals to have high education. So, first, I'm going to talk about how we started with badminton. Especially for high performance. I know that Christoph has talked about this. I'm going to repeat、uh, certain things. I'm going to remind you a little bit about the volunteers as well. Also,、um, I'm going to talk about、uh, sport lovers and the federation. This is the system. This is how our federation works, and it's important to take this into account. We should not forget anything. We have our own vision, which is my vision, but also it's the mission of my team, and that's to support badminton activities and promote high performance. We conceive high performance like this. We have friends, and we began、uh, working on high performance in nineteen eighty four, and we continued working on this until the end of the nineties. We had a French team. And we wanted to bring them to competitions, but this country did our country did not know badminton. Badminton was learned in physical education classes. So since nineteen eighty four, especially since nineteen ninety two, mainly the manager of the federation back then. Open these、uh, French centers, so he divided the country in regions in order to start structuring badminton. So f- first, we could have the possibility for high performance. High performance includes exceptional athletes who came from different、uh, French centers, like Christophe, who became one of the best、uh, players in a country. And thanks to this training, they were able to reach the high performance, the high level. So there was no development policy. However, really quickly, Olivier Vin set a training plan for coaches, and this was implemented approximately in the nineties or in the beginning of the two thousands. I apologize for this presentation. This is my style, but well,、um, talking about the manager back then, he entrusted me the restructuring of everything we had in order to implement French badminton really well, so we could actually win medals, but without having to go to foreigners. Well, we had In Yang who came help us, but my mission. Was to build the little by little the high performance level with this club structure. We had the pass bad. I'm going to talk about pass bad later on. But before we could have champions, we had to build the sport since a very. From the very early years, so it was fundamental to teach people about high performance, how we we can understand this process, and that's why we make the first step together with the manager back then. So we、uh, had different team competitions. We had a regional center. We created certain systems in order to have. Quality training in every place. We also designed a synergy with all coaches back then. Back then, in order to see in,、uh, badminton in China, in Indonesia, in the Basque、um, 
country and the Netherlands and other places. And that's how we learned about uh, team competitions with uh, young children and also how international teams worked. So this was the a new style for people who did not how to work in doubles, for example. So they had the, uh, the possibility to enter competitions. So I made my bags and I toured around France in order to see how was high performance training everywhere. So I had to spend a lot of time traveling in order to get to this point. In the year 2008 until 2012, we keep working on this system based on youth with a true national policy, which we should always do. We need to teach per territory. We had different systems like the uh, Avenir clubs, as my colleague talked before. We had a person who came from uh, a different sport, from swimming. We have a new um, regional manager who was in charge of implementing all of the, these uh, structure. And we prioritized team competitions and we started uh, identifying talent. So we energized these teams. And thanks to that, we were able to conquer our first medal in a gold medal in doubles together with Ireland actually because we had a French athlete and an Irish athlete but he was he had completely trained in France and thanks to this we were able as a society we were able to win this medal so we continued working at a regional level, we improved the quality, also the training load. And little by little, we were able to build what we currently have. And that's why we have the results that we ha currently have. Christoph told you a little bit about this. And thanks to the centers that we have everywhere in France, as you can see in the map, we have these regional centers that are everywhere in the French territory. So we were able to uh, win these medals. Every year, within each one of these uh, centers, we have different systems. And our team is constantly improving thanks to quality trainings that are always analyzed and assessed in competitions. And we keep training and we keep trying to improve quality in order to uh, win medals. And little by little, with every uh, world medal that we win, we also improve. And we hope to win a French badminton medal in 2024 as well. Here you can also see the medal structure that we have. This is the number of gold medals that we've won in yellow that has also evolved. Also, we have uh, had some progress in European medals. You can see where the gold comes up. And when we talk about uh, team medals, in the case of the youth, our policy is based on the youth, and that's how we've been able to develop champions, and we've been able to win the most beautiful of the medals, which is uh, in the Paralympics. We won two gold medals in the Paralympics, in para badminton. You know the uh, young guy, uh, Chris Christopher Popov? who won a silver medal in the European Championship. So these are just some photos that allow us to see how we've reached our goal, that we are present in the youth, in European competitions all the time, together with the coaches and senior athletes. We are always working in order to go to the competitions and to be able to participate in the Olympics Games of Tokyo and the Paralympic Games in Paris in order to win the best of medals. Now, Adrienne, I think that you're up.
very well. So, I'm quite impressed. By the number of participants who have joined this call, I'm really happy. I, I am here to talk about French badminton, but I have a technical issue here. Oh, perfect. So, the second part we've already talked about high performance, and now I think that we can talk about. Badminton for all, for all French people, which is also part of our mission. And the government also requires me to work on these. The Federation is also committed to this as well. The French Badminton Federation has a lot of members and 70% of the members do not practice badminton in competitions. They don't participating competitions so, and we need to support these players as well because they are 70% of the players who don't practice the sport at a high level but they practice the sport there are people like you and me who love badminton and they want to play it personally I am not a high uh, performance player like Christophe I'm actually a volleyball player who one day or came across badminton and that's when I fell in love with the sport. That's when my love story with the sport began. And I think that this story is repeated with um, many people in... has this The same story has occurred to other people within the Federation. Here you can see all the different stakeholders who are the target of our Federation. The youngest, the oldest, women in badminton, para-badminton, citizen badminton... Uh, health badminton, badminton school, badminton everywhere, and international relationship. So let's start with the youngest. What systems have we implemented in order to help the youngest to practice this sport in good conditions? Christoph has already said it. We have prepared a system called PassBad. This allows us to prepare our athletes with five shuttles or five levels that help athletes to develop. And if they want, they if they wanted, they could also get to the high performance. First, we have just to get ready to prepare to play badminton. The second level is to become a badminton player. We need to find a, an opponent. Then the third level is to get information about badminton. And the fourth one is how to react with intention. And the final step is to uh, build a tactic problem for our opponent. And thanks to this qualitative badminton we have the possibility to go to a competition or practice it with another person with any opponent and just play it for fun something that's really important as well is that in france there the senior category begins at 35 years old and we can check that badminton players we can see the badminton players include people like Tintin or Tantan this is a, a character that has its own his own style so we also have um uh, people in France that are 24 years or older who play uh, badminton and I apologize because they're not really seniors because they're not that old but it, that's how we uh, categorize them so we want to reach them all until the very oldest of players and we found quite success with this uh, program we've um, gone to houses where senior people uh, go to in order to play these uh, different activities and they play this for fun 
because they can uh, move their bodies and with the, these uh, senior program we're working with the oldest uh, the third target audience that we're also paying a lot of attention is women so women in badminton why because in france Seventy percent of the people who practice sport are men, and only thirty percent are women. And this is something that we want to change. And the, the, these percentages are pretty much the same in our federation. More than thirty percent are women, and sixty-four percent of uh, the people who play badminton are men. And remember that e equality is part of our slogan. And that's why we prepared a program in order to welcome all women as well. We have different programs like this one, which is in charge of the youngest talent. So it can start at an early age. We have what we call fitminton which allows us to uh, become fit through badminton. And we also have here in France um, a lot of violence. That's what we've uh, seen. We have seen a lot of violence against women. They suffer a lot of violence in every environment. And that's why the Federation has signed a, an ethical convention in order to include women in every program so we could actually help every French citizen to practice a sport without any violence. We also have a program that was created specifically for para badminton this is very high valued in our federation this is for people who uh, have uh, disabilities regardless of the type of disability that they have maybe if they are in wheelchairs or maybe they have a specific disability in one of their limbs so it doesn't matter the type of disability they have we have prepared a program in order to have presence in the Paralympics. And we achieved this after eight years and we finally got a gold medal, which is the most beautiful of all medals, not only in singles, but also in doubles. We also have a social program that was required by the government. They uh, told us you have to work together with the Federation in order to achieve our goal. We also have a program for health. France realized that we need to have a better health and when our health is better, we have a better economy. So we wanted to improve the numbers in health as well in our country. So we thought that the best way to achieve this was for everyone to uh, be healthy and so all doctors can prescribe uh, to practice sport in case of any illness because that will allow the person to have a better lifestyle and to um so this sport can be part of different therapies. I think that this is a quite interesting uh, initiative from the government and we are very proud of being part of this medical sport program. So in this program, badminton is part of the prescriptions for uh, different illnesses. And I think that this is the, mo the most important program of all. The government has also asked us to work with schools. And to me, 
I didn't need the government to tell me to do this. But if the Federation wants to develop badminton, badminton needs to be present in everyone's mind. And the best way to do this is by uh, making uh, school students to practice badminton as part of their school classes. So together with my colleagues who work who also work uh, for the government, we did everything that was in our hands in order to include badminton in schools. So we have positioned badminton, uh, we have included badminton in the school curriculum. So every school student knows what badminton is in France. And they know that they can join a, a team. And if even if they don't do this, they know about the sport. So every child, the youngest of children until 17 or 18 years old, or even if they go to higher education, they have badminton in their minds. Nowadays, we are aware of the fact that badminton needs to be everywhere. We should not only have badminton in one place. We have to be able to play badminton wherever. Any space can become a badminton court. You might have also seen that uh, BWF, the Badminton World Federation, has also had the same position. So we want to have badminton as well everywhere, not only in coliseums. As public servants, we want also French people to play this sport in under good conditions, in coliseums with all these safety measures. But our job is also to become a benchmark so all French people can work under good conditions. So they could also work but being environmentally responsible. So we can play badminton anywhere, but without leaving any harmful um, leftover anywhere. So I think that we have accomplished that objective especially thanks to the work that Olivier did, we were able to position French badminton and thanks to the French slogan and thanks to the strong work of, the hard work of the, the Federation. Here you can see that this structure has allowed us to work around the world. That's why we have We have been working with the Francophone uh, Badminton Association, Badminton Europe, and the Badminton World Federation. We have been able to position our sport and participate with other countries regardless of the spirit. We want to share our strategy at an international level. But what about tomorrow? What will happen with French badminton? We want to be present in more places. We want to be in the Eiffel Tower. We want to be in the bridges. We want to be everywhere. And then we want to win more medals. We want to have quality medals. We want to keep working uh, so we can have badminton for all, as I, as I said before, for the elderly, for the youngsters, for women, for um, uh, people with disabilities, for everyone. We have to keep thinking about uh, freedom, equality, and fraternity. Uh, so we have to work with dynamis, with being dynamic uh, with everyone, with the youngsters, with passion, with energy, in order for everyone to have the means to play the sport. So to conclude, we have volunteers who give their time without asking anything in return. We want to uh, we work for the people who love this sport. We have a strong structure within the federation, and we are we also work thanks. We also work together with the strong government in order to create this French badminton, so we can win the best medals of all, including the Olympic 
met us. So we um welcome you to Paris 2024. So this is the end of my presentation. I think that I've shared my passion with everyone. I think that I've convinced you that French badminton is something that keeps evolving and progressing for everyone, thanks to the volunteers that we have. And we are creating a French proposal and we have this, the fraternity spirit. And I thank you once again, because uh, with that fraternity spirit, I'm here to share with you. Thank you, Philippe. Let me tell you that there are people who are sending their greens from Peru, Peru, Argentina, Mexico, Costa Rica, uh, Colombia. So your words have been heard throughout America. I have some questions that I would like to ask you among these. Well, when you thought about this program, you thought about a first stage. You thought about developing high performance in your country or do you think about developing, uh, promoting the sport in at an early age first? I think that we have to think as badminton we have to think of badminton as a sport for all. And of course, we need to have high performance because we need to teach it to everyone and we need the means to do so. So when we talk about high performance, we are thinking about something that is being built. But badminton is learned as any physical activity. So we have worked on that. But this can be applied to any program. Badminton is in the center. And based on this badminton, we have built the notion for badminton for all, for uh, people with disabilities, for everyone. So badminton is the core, regardless of the activity. It's always based on uh, its performance when you play a sport with your friend, uh, you want to make, uh, you want to score, and that's the idea. As a physical educator and a coach, well, many of us coaches come from different sports, and I agree with you, we fell in love with badminton. The concept that you have of badminton for all, I think that it's a good alternative because at the end of the day, if we, if we want to develop badminton in our countries and make it a great sport, the more fans we have, the more popular it will be, and we have to create that fan base. What do you think of this initiative? Do you think that this is the road to take to make this sport more massive, creating more fans without forgetting about high performance as well? Well, the first stage would be to make badminton known. So it's a cultural element of every country. So it is part of the well-known sports in all countries. So that's the first thing that you need to do. And then advice that I can give you is to include badminton in every school. That's fundamental. To make every student play badminton and based on that the badminton culture will be built and then students would choose if they want to join a team or uh, those are choices but first you need to, to introduce the badminton culture. I totally agree with you. I have a question from Coach Roberto Cruz from Mexico. He has seen the FBAD uh, program that includes different tools for coaches. He would like you to tell us a little bit about this. Well, the coach 
program was structured stage by stage. In the beginning, the idea was to train the basics, to teach the basics, for example, to do the lesson plans, the tactics, and so on and so forth. And then we realized that we had to structure all the environment of badminton in a professional way. So we created practices in order to make our coaches professional so they could be professionals who could be hired by a club for a specific project. So first we need to train or to educate them in badminton to make them professionals and then give them the financial means so they could be professional. So we had to educate them first and then give them the possibility to be financed. Perfect. There is something that calls my attention and I would like to ask you. In Europe, you've already started developing mini badminton with different strategies. For example, changing the height of the net, uh, the size of the court, the size of the racket. And what results have you seen in early ages as well as in under 10 tournaments. What's badminton? Badminton is a court, the shuttle, the racket, and the net. And we try to make the shuttle get to the opponent's side of the court. So badminton is not the height of the net, or the size of the racket. It's just the possibility of making a point to score. So evidently, the court is not in your mind when you play badminton. So when we lowered the net, we did this in order to achieve the most important thing, which is to build badminton tactics at an early age. Once again, it is just logics. There's a very good uh, coach that came to France, Marcel Roux, who has been copied by many other coaches, uh, myself as well. I'm not a good coach, but well, I, I play the sport in their way. So badminton technically does not exist Badminton players exist. But we have we have to try to score. The moment that you move that racket, that's the spirit of badminton. That's how we conceive badminton. So you can solve any problems regarding the height of the person or the person's lifestyle and so on. Perfect. Very well. I have three short questions. Maybe you can help us with them. What do you think about the shuttle time program that has been implemented by, by the BWF? Also, I have a friend from Argentina who's asking about the logistics that you used in the beginning when you didn't have enough rackets or shuttles for the children. And I have one more question What do you think about air badminton? Well, shuttle time is amazing. It's fantastic. It's quite smart. It's very smart. It's a very smart program that can be used anywhere at any age. It's amazing. This program was written by John Wright, with whom we worked a lot in France. And we got the French inspiration in him, from him. So it's even more amazing. And um, to me, shuttle time is excellent. 
Now, talking about the problem with uh, rackets and shuttles, it was a big problem for us because, yes, they are expensive and it can be expensive for children as well, of course. So at the beginning, badminton clubs bought these uh, rackets and lent them. And that's how we began working with schools as well. The schools were the ones who bought the equipment and then lent them. Uh, but nowadays, every school district has uh, their own equipment. The same happened with uh, shuttles. When you start practicing badminton, you realize that there are certain limitations. Uh, if you wanted to reach a higher level, you need to have all the right equipment to practice sport, to, to practice badminton, including young players. Um, that's not a problem. What's important is to use your logic. As I said before, you have to think about what the problem is and then solve it. Talking about air badminton, that's everywhere. It's great. Especially with this new air shuttle and playing it three against three. That's great. That's the future. Just as beach volleyball, as any um, activity that you do outdoors, air badminton will become, I don't know, in a year or two, or maybe in 12 years, in 16 years, I don't know, it will become an Olympic sport as well, because playing a three against three, this mixed game will be something, will, will be an, a, a fantastic, exceptional activity that will be accessible to everyone. And that's something that I love. Congratulations to the Badminton World Federation. Bravo. I think we have a great future with these new m methods and we need to start working on them. Philippe, you know very well that badminton in Latin America is a sport that is evolving that is making progress as a physical education teacher and coach. Which advice would you give us to countries that have a low budget, especially? The first thing that I would say for those countries who don't have a lot of resources Well, it would be to first introduce the sport in schools and position the sport really, really well, position badminton really well in schools. They w children will ask for the sport. They will say, please, we want to have badminton classes. Please lend, uh, lend us, lend us uh, the rackets and so on. The other thing is that you need to... You need to let your government know that practicing badminton makes the nation grow and to uh, co-live because you play with men and women two different religions can play together without uh, religion actually getting mixed so it's a sport that helps join people I think that that's the the speech that you should give to your government uh, under a democratic basis. It's very easy to co-live if you practice sport, especially if you practice badminton. Thank you, Philippe. I have one more minute. Would you like to send a last uh, message to Latin American coaches that are listening to you today? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I am quite impressed by the turnout. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for your questions. And thank you for, thank you. I would like to thank Badminton Pan Am. I hope that French Badminton has uh, taught you a little bit uh, we wanted to share with you. Thank you, Badminton Pan America. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, everyone who took some time to 
share today. I was impressed by the turnout. All these people who wanted to learn about French badminton. Please, if you have any questions, you can ask me or Olivier, Oliver as well. We are happy to share with you just as I did today. Thank you very much. I hope I answered all your questions. Thank you very much, Philippe. Thank you so much for such an interesting talk and for sharing your experience. As always, it's very enriching to discuss and analyze these topics uh, related to development in other parts of the world. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for your help. To our badminton audience, to our badminton family, get your smartphones ready to capture the QR code. We invite you to the last session of the second season where we will present one of the research papers that won and this is entitled para badminton initiation proposal for children using wheelchairs which will be given by Elin Miranda Strapson from Brazil this talk will be transmitted next Tuesday October 13th at 3 p.m. Lima time we encourage you to propose topics you are interested in. Write them down in the chat box. I would also like to invite you to check out Badminton Panam's YouTube channel where you will be able to watch today's conference as well as others that we've had in the past. On behalf of Badminton Panam, we thank you for joining us and we hope you like this session. Take care. And see you soon. Good evening.